Welcome to Brett Ridgeway's Learning for Life. This is Lesson 5, Part 5 of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain in the series of Learning a Tune from Scratch. And we've covered so much just in the first four lessons. If you're just falling into this lesson, if you just stumbled upon this lesson, I'm going to recommend that you do not do this lesson, but that you go back to the first lesson. And the reason for that is you need to get that foundation. In the very first lesson, I taught you to play the scale across the fretboard rather than vertically up the fretboard. And then I taught you the first phrase of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain and encouraged you to figure out the rest of the tune with the tips and the helps that I've given you to figure out that first phrase. Whether you accomplish that or not does not matter. What does matter is whether you tried to do it. That's what's important, that you made the attempt to pick out the rest of the song instead of just waiting for me to teach it to you. So I hope you did that. And then I encouraged you to try to pick out tunes like Mary Had a Little Lamb, Three Blind Mice. And again, whether you accomplished it does not matter. What's important is that you attempted it. And then I basically taught you the rest of the tune. I taught you the basic melody. In lesson two, we added a chord to every note of the tune by assigning a chord to a fret number or the note of the melody. And then we played it where we were more flat picking it, just using the chords occasionally, and you're not necessarily making a chord for every note. And then I encouraged you to take the same songs Mary Had a Little Lamb, Three Blind Mice, whatever songs you wanted, and apply chords to that using that same technique. And again, whether you accomplished it or not does not matter. What's important is that you attempted it and then that you tried it. We also talked about moving our tune from the melody to the bass string. And we then talked about taking that melody and using the chords and playing it above the seventh fret or at the seventh fret. Today, we're talking about hammer-ons, and this is going to be fun. This is not so much thinking uh, as some of this other stuff we were doing. This is where we get to be a little bit creative. It's not going to be hard. I'm just going to give you some ideas that you can play with and maybe come up with some ideas of your own. So we're going to jump right into this. And again, if you've not done the previous lessons, please don't attempt this lesson uh, until, until we do this. So here we go. Uh, in the very first, we play or depending on what direction you want to go. Let's try this. So this is like a little intro lick. You're picking the middle string, hammer on, then melody out, middle back. Get comfortable with that. And then you're gonna to go to the next melody note. So let's let's put it together right here. So you see where it fits in? Let's go to the bass. One more time. And then let's do it again because I really want you to get this little lick down. You can use this several times in other tunes. Don't worry if I do something a little different with the picking. What you want to do is get this down. Bum diddy bum diddy. Bum diddy bum diddy bum. That's as simple as we're going to get that. So make sure you get that down. So you, you might want to stop. 
Now, you can go to the melody or the bass. I'm going to go to the bass because I like how it sounds with the hammer-ons. But whatever I do here, you can do here on the melody. The, the basic melody we taught is this. So let's see what we can do. Now I did two hammer-ons. Let's, let's just do one. Again. Let's do two hammer-ons. Let's try it on the melody. And again, you can mix that up. You don't have to do it exactly like that. The idea is where you're going to put in those hammer-ons. So from the beginning, Notice I didn't do it right there. And whether I put it there or not doesn't matter. That's the idea is that you can mix this up because when you play it through several times, you want to do it different. Sorry. So again, you might want to stop, play around with that. Don't try to do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I, I didn't really give you many other options, but maybe go from the bass and, and do it on the melody. So we're to this A right now. So what can we do with the A? I'm just doing a hammer on there. Either one hammer on or two, you could do it on the melody. Once, I've done it twice, I've done it three times. Right there, I just threw in another hammer on that I didn't do before. So you see how I think this is a lot of fun, uh, how, how you can do this. We're on the next phrase. By the way, you can put hammer-ons in there. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you figure that out. We're on the G. You could do a hammer-on on that middle string with your ring. You could do it with this pointer finger. Uh, let's get to that point. Or you could do it this way. Uh, let's see. What I'm say, showing you here is the possibilities are really kind of endless of what you can do. Um, and there, instead of hitting the melody, I hit the harmony. There, I did something totally different again. I made the A chord. Instead of hammering on there, I hammered on to the second fret. Let's do it again. another one in there.
So I gave you a whole lot of ideas there. And I'm just going to throw in slides because it's going to be about the same thing. You can't do a slide from an open fret, but Sorry, let's do that again. You can do a slide there. Right there. So I, you could slide from four to three. You could slide from four to three to two if you keep the pressure down. You could slide right there. Uh, let's try this. I never did this. I'm just going to see if it works. Right there. So your melody's three. You could go down to two and slide up to it. Again, I'm giving you an idea. I'm starting, I'm playing this on the bass. Let's see? Right there, I went from the bass to the melody. Even right there. So I've given you a bunch of ideas. What you need to do is play with this a lot. This is where it starts to get, to me, it gets really, really fun because you're, you're getting to explore, you're getting to just have fun with it. And just noodling around is going to really, really help you. I hope you're enjoying these lessons. I hope they're a blessing to you. Uh, I've gotten a lot of good comments on this, on this series. Uh, I'm not sure. Again, I'm going to leave this up to the patrons to see what direction they want to go with this. Uh, but we still have uh, three more lessons uh, on this series, or on this tune, rather. And uh, we're going to be doing some other things and checking some other things out. So thank you so much. And thank you, patrons, for giving. Thank you for your support. Thank you for making these lessons possible. Thank you for being an integral and the foundation of this work. If you're taking these lessons and they're free of charge, especially if they're a help and a blessing, I would ask you to consider becoming a patron, supporting this work, investing in your own learning process. When you invest in your own learning process, it's it's actually helps you learn better. Uh, so many times when you get stuff for free, what you do is you just flip around and go everything for free. And uh, you're really not invested in anything. So I want to thank the patrons and anyone who might consider becoming a patron. There's information beneath. There's a link to the patron site. Explains how it works. With that patron site, you get a free one-hour lesson or a group lesson with all the patrons. Uh, workshop, rather. And a... Uh, or a jam every single month. So I hope uh, you might consider that. Thank you all again. God bless. We'll see you next week.